Dear friends, I greet you in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. For several weeks, uh, we have all been wrestling individually and as a society, as parts of communities, and certainly as people of Christian faith, with uh, the continuing unfolding saga following the tragic shooting death of Trayvon Martin in Florida. Sometimes when difficult things happen in our society or in uh, the societies around the world, it's been my custom to communicate with you in some way that's often been by a written letter or something that's come out to you by email, a pastoral word, if you will. On this occasion, I've chosen in partnership with my colleague, Bishop John Roth, who is the bishop uh, essentially of the same geography as our annual conference for the uh, a synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America for Central and Southern Illinois, to sit at table, be in community, be in conversation about this difficult matter that has been wrenching our heart and has been driving conversations across all sorts of mediums. So our pastoral word to you is be in conversation, be in relationship, be a builder of community, be deeply committed once again to what Micah invited us to in behalf of God, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. I pray that this video conversation will stir you up to new and fresh conversations and new and fresh commitments to be a justice-seeking Christian, a Christian who loves all of your neighbors and who is always at the ready to be an agent of healing and reconciliation. Such healing and reconciliation that we have seen chiefly in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you. My initial reaction was sadness. I mean, a profound sadness. It's an, it's an unspeakable tragedy. I had, this, I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach that regardless of what other factors are involved, and there are always multiple factors involved in something like this, there's no escaping that there is a racial element to it. There's no escaping that the racial character of the incident played into the reality of the tragedy. Well, like you, uh, my dear colleague, my initial response was uh, deep sadness and uh, uh, in, in the most uh, empathic sense of uh, as a parent, um, so as in the pastoral sense, wondering what those parents and, and close relatives were feeling like. I also know that whenever a young person let's say teenager uh, passes away suddenly and tragically, no matter what the nature of the tragedy is, um, that there's a whole community of uh, other young people that, that age that uh, uh, kind of get uh, drawn into that emotionally, both out of the relationship and I assume out of some sense of uh, projection, which we all do some form of projecting. Um, and then I had this gnawing feeling, um, okay, give us more detail. Um, surely this is a nightmare, and some details will assuage the sense of nightmarishness and uh, help us to see uh, to see our way forward. So those were some of the uh, feelings I had in the early days when I first became um, aware of this. But still, if not your initial reaction early on, did you too get this sense that oh no, this is. This is a racial issue also. Absolutely. And I know that it has um, been great fodder um, for those who want to say race is not involved. And uh, from the standpoint of what is going on in any individual's mind and what their personal motives are, uh, it's always difficult, if not impossible, to know that. Um, but given our unique history in America, um, and uh, around around race, and given some of the things that I've heard about the history of relationships 
in that community where this awful tragedy uh, took place, um, I could not help but believe um, that race was a factor because it's always sort of looming right. uh, in the background. That does not um, attach motive uh, to uh, Mr. Zimmerman, for no. example. Um, I can't know that, but um, because of our histories and uh, relationships, uh, or lack thereof as the case may be, uh, it becomes a factor. Yeah. 